Hello, welcome to Daily News Simplified, an answer to what, why and how of newspaper reading. Today, we are going to discuss the important issues appearing in the New Delhi edition of the Hindu newspaper dated 4th November 2019. The news to be discussed has been presented on the screen and time stamping for the same has been provided in the description box below. So let's start our today's discussion. The first news appears on page number 8. It says, 500 passenger trains get ISRO enabled GPS. It will monitor precise speed as well as location. So as for this news, about 500 passenger locomotives or passenger trains of South Central Railway have been fitted with the newly developed real-time information system or RTIS. And this will help in monitoring precise speeds as well as movement of the train throughout its journey from the starting point to the end destination. And this information through real-time information system will be gradually provided to passengers for their planned travel. So in this aspect, the railway authorities have said that they even plan to install RTIS that is real-time train information system even on freight trains as it will help in tracking unscheduled stoppages, mechanical breakdowns and even theft on such freight trains. So in this aspect, let us learn certain basic information about real-time information system. On your prelims examination, this topic forms a part of general science, whereas in your mains, it gets covered under GS paper 3, specifically with respect to science and technology and development and their application and effects in everyday life, achievement of Indians in science and technology, as well as awareness in the fields of technology. Now RTIS, that is Real Time Train Information System, has been developed by Center for Railway Information System with the help of Gagan, that is GPS aided Geo Augmented Navigation. Now Gagan is a satellite based augmented system to manage traffic in the Indian airspace and has been developed by ISRO as well as Airports Authority of India. Now let us understand that how will RTIS work. Now every train to be tracked through RTIS shall be installed with an application software. And this application software in the train shall determine the train movement events such as arrival of a train at a particular station, departure of a train from a particular station, running through of trains at different stations. And these events of the train or these movements of the train shall be based on spatial coordinates and speed received continuously from Gagan receiver. So it simply means that Gagan will track the movement of trains through spatial coordinates and speed received continuously from the Gagan receiver. Now these information or these events related to position, location etc shall be communicated to the central location server of the Indian Railway and this will be done using SMS as well as mobile data services. The information received by the central location server shall be processed and then relayed to the control office application and this will be done for the purpose of automatic plotting of control charts for each train or for such trains. Now the control office application has been integrated with the national train inquiry system and this will automatically allow the passengers to have accurate real-time information of trains. For the emergency messaging between the locomotive driver and the control office shall also be implemented through RTIS. So this is primarily how the RTIS will work. So after understanding the working of RTIS, let us also go through some of the benefits of RTIS. So the benefits include automatic capture of train running information and automatic plotting of control charts in control office application. Next, accurate train running information to passengers as it will also allow the passengers to plan their travel accordingly. Better management of railway traffic through real-time data. Improved customer services. Stress-free work conditions for train controllers because they'll having accurate details with respect to movement of trains. And also, optimum utilization of resources. So these can be said to be some of the benefits of RTIS. Now this particular question was asked in the prelims of 2018. The question was, in which of the following areas can GPS technology be used? 
options were mobile phone operations, banking operations, as well as controlling the power grids. The question was select the correct answer using the code given below. So in this, the correct answer was D that is one, two and three. So we see that uses of global positioning system has been asked previously by UPSC. So on this note, this particular news on real time train information system becomes important from your pre as well as mains point of view. The next news appears on page number nine. It says army to have first Dhanush regiment by March 2020. An entire order for 114 guns will be completed by the year 2022 as per the Indian army. Now Dhanush is an indigenously upgraded variant of Swedish Bofors gun. So this news highlights that Dhanush which is the first long range artillery gun having a range of roughly around 36 km will be inducted in the Indian army as of today that is on 4th November 2019. The long range artillery gun that is Dhanush has been manufactured by Jabalpur based gun carriage factory which is one of the 41 ordnance factories of India. Now as already mentioned Dhanush is the indigenously upgraded variant of the Swedish Bofors gun which was imported in India in the early 80s. So this topic of Dhanush gun in your prelims examination forms a part of general science. Now in your mains examination this topic gets covered under GS paper 3 with respect to science and technology and achievement of Indians in science and technology. Now Dhanush is a 155 mm and 45 caliber towed artillery gun having a range of 36 km in general and also has a demonstrated range of 38 km with specialized ammunition. The Dhanush gun system can be employed in all types of terrain in India. Dhanush is fitted with an inertial navigation system having global positioning system based gun recording and auto laying. It also has an enhanced tactical computer for onboard ballistic computations and has an automated gun sighting system equipped with camera, thermal imaging and laser range finder. Now as already stated that Dhanush is an indigenously upgraded variant of Swedish Bofors gun. So the electronic upgrades includes enhancing firing accuracy of Dhanush, laying speeds and also having compatibility with Project Shakti which is artillery combat command and control system of the Indian army. So the Dhanush gun system has successfully completed all trial parameters and nearly 5000 rounds have been fired during the various internal and user trials in different terrains. So basically Dhanush has been tried and tested in various terrains of Indian subcontinent. So the upgraded Dhanush system has undoubtedly emerged as a reliable and robust gun system which is at par with the latest in the world and this will help in increasing the firepower of the Indian artillery. Now the Indian army has recently procured 155 mm X caliber precision guided ammunition from the United States and this can also be used with the Dhanush guns. So these can be said to be the important features of long range artillery Dhanush guns. Now with respect to Indian Ordnance Factories, you must know that Indian Ordnance Factory is an industrial setup which functions under the Department of Defense Production under Ministry of Defense. Now this point can be asked in your prelims examination. Next, Indian Ordnance Factories is headquartered in Kolkata and this is a conglomerate of 41 factories, 9 training institutes, 3 regional marketing centers and 4 regional controller of safety. So these are some of the important aspects of Indian Ordnance Factories that it functions under the Department of Defense Production of Ministry of Defense and it is headquartered in Kolkata. Now this news becomes important from your prelims as well as mains perspective specifically with respect to technology as well as security. The next news appears on page number 9. It says ISRO's NAVIC set to be commercialized by Antrix. The regional navigation satellite system can serve as an indigenous global positioning system that is GPS. Now as for this news, the commercial arm of ISRO that is Antrix is set to commercialize India's regional navigational system that is NAVIC. 
Now NAVIC stands for Navigation with Indian Constellation. Further, the Antrix Corporation is also set to issue tenders to identify the industries that can develop hardware needed for the NAVIC. So with respect to this news, let us understand about navigation with Indian constellation. Now this topic in your prelims examination forms a part of general science and in your mains gets covered under GS paper 3 specifically with respect to technology and its applications. Now NAVIC also known as Indian Regional Navigation Satellite System that is IRNSS is an independent regional navigation satellite system which is being developed by ISRO. It is designed to provide accurate position information service to its users in India as well as in the neighboring region extending up to 1500 km from Indian boundary. Now NAVIC is basically a constellation of total of 7 satellites which is launched in space including ground facility on land to receive signals from these satellites. Now of these 7 satellites, 3 satellites will be in the geostationary orbit whereas 4 satellites will be in the geosynchronous orbit. Now this news mentions that there are a total of 8 satellites. So let us clear this particular confusion. So to clear the confusion, we have taken this picture from the website of ISRO. It mentions about the list of navigation satellites. As you can see, it mentions about the different satellites such as IRNSS 1A, 1B, 1C, 1D, 1E, 1F, 1G, 1H and 1I. So these includes a total of 9 satellites launched by ISRO for the IRNSS system. However, the launch of 8 satellite that is IRNSS 1H was proved unsuccessful. And because of this another satellite that is IRNSS 1I was launched to replace IRNSS 1A. So in total only 7 satellites remain with respect to the IRNSS system. Of which 3 are in the geostationary orbit and 4 are in the geosynchronous orbit. So on this note let us also understand the difference between geostationary and geosynchronous orbit. Now geosynchronous orbit are at an altitude of 35,786 kilometers from the surface of the earth. So from such an altitude at any inclination the geosynchronous orbit synchronizes with the rotation of the earth. So its inclination or degree of inclination may vary but it always synchronizes its own rotation with that of the earth. So, the satellite rotates along with the Earth's rotation on its axis and hence takes the same time. So, for a person on Earth, these satellites will appear to be stationary in the sky over the region because their rotation synchronizes or are in sync with the rotation of the Earth. Another important aspect with respect to geosynchronous orbit is that these orbits can have any degree of inclination or their degree of inclination might change. For example, this can be also another degree of their inclination. So the degree of inclination in a geosynchronous orbit may change or may vary. Whereas geostationary orbit lie on the same plane as that of the equator and these orbits do not have any degree of inclination. So, the geostationary orbit lies on the same plane as that of the equator which is highlighted through the red line here whereas the geosynchronous satellites or orbit has a different inclination and this is the key difference between geostationary orbit as well as geosynchronous orbit. Now coming back to IRNSS it provides specially two types of services namely standard positioning services and second is the restricted services. Now standard positioning services is provided to all users whereas restricted services is a kind of an encrypted service which is provided only to authorized users. Now these can be said to be some of the applications of IRNSS. These are terrestrial, aerial and marine navigation, disaster management, vehicle tracking and fleet management, integration with mobile phones, precise timing, 
मैपिंग एंड जियोडेटिक डेटा कैप्चर टेरिस्ट्रियल नेविगेशन एड फॉर हाइकर्स एंड ट्रेवलर्स एंड ऑल्सो विजुअल एंड वॉइस नेविगेशन फॉर ड्राइवर्स फर्दर दी सैटेलाइट ऑल्सो हैव यूज इन दी माइनिंग एंड ट्रांसपोर्टेशन सेक्टर्स Now some of the similar positioning systems of other countries are GPS for USA, GLONASS for Russia, Galileo for Europe and Beidou for China. So you must remember these points as they can be asked in your prelims examination. Now after understanding this let's also go through the significance of Indian regional navigation satellite system. So the significance includes that development of navic will reduce India's dependence on other countries for navigation because as of now we use gps of the united states further it will also help in various disaster management efforts in india and it will also help in mitigating the impacts of such disaster as the government will have pinpointed information based on the timing of such disasters so these information will not only help in managing the disaster but will also save lives of millions of people not only in india but up to the region where the satellite covers that is up to 1500 kilometers surrounding india further it will not only help the mariners but also the fishermen with respect to precise timing and location of these valuable fishes further there would be also certain military applications of irnss as it will make data transmission more secure and confidential now another important aspect is that navic also covers the entire sark region by extending up to 1500 kilometers outside india and this can be used by india as a leverage to reach out to its neighboring countries and demonstrate its skills especially with respect to its global leadership aspiration by providing various services through navic so effectively irnss or navic can help india to serve as a net security provider in the indian subcontinent and also in the sark regions now based on our discussion let's go through this question asked by upsc in prelims of 2018 the question was with reference to the indian regional navigation satellite system that is irnss consider the following statements first irnss has three satellites in geostationary and four satellites in the geosynchronous orbits as you can see that we discussed that there are three satellites in the geostationary orbit and four satellites in the geosynchronous orbit hence the first statement becomes correct second irnss covers entire india and about 5500 km beyond its border no it's only 1500 km beyond its border so the second statement becomes incorrect third India will have its own satellite navigation system with full global coverage by middle of 2019 no this again is incorrect as it only has regional coverage up to 1500 kilometers beyond the indian borders so in this the question was which of the statements given above is a correct so the correct answer is a that is one only the next news appears on page number 13 it says india uzbekistan Inc. three defense deals MOUs seek to enhance cooperation in military medicine education and training so india and uzbekistan has signed three memorandums of understanding to enhance cooperation in the field of military medicine military education as well as military training and this has been done during the visit of indian defense minister shri rajnath singh to tashkent that is the capital of uzbekistan further during the visit the indian defense minister also held consultations with the defense minister of uzbekistan so this topic from your prelims perspective forms a part of current events of international importance and in your mains gets covered under gs paper 2 specifically with respect to bilateral agreements between india and uzbekistan now from a map perspective you must know which of the countries borders uzbekistan these countries are Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan and Kazakhstan. And most part of Aral Sea also comes within the border of Uzbekistan. So in this let us understand the enhanced level of defense engagement between India and Uzbekistan. 
So after the visit of Indian Defence Minister to Uzbekistan, there has been an enhanced level of defence engagement between the two countries. And during the meeting, both sides expressed satisfaction at the enhanced level of defence engagement. And this enhanced level of defence engagement was reflected in their first ever meeting of the Joint Working Group on Defence Cooperation in February 2019. Secondly, during the visit of Defence Secretary of India in March 2019 and first ever Defence Industry Workshop which has been organised in Tashkent in September 2019. So all these activities describe the enhanced level of defence engagement between India and Uzbekistan. Further, India has even offered a concessional line of credit of US $40 million and this has been done for the procurement of goods and services by Uzbekistan from India. So this line of credit has been given to Uzbekistan so that they can procure goods and services easily from India. So extending line of credit worth 40 million dollars to Uzbekistan also refers to or also reflects an enhanced level of defense engagement between the two countries. Further, there has been an increase in direct exchanges between the armed forces of both India as well as Uzbekistan. And this increase in direct exchanges is with respect to training, capacity building as well as education. Another important aspect is that both defense ministers jointly presided over the curtain raiser of first India-Uzbekistan joint exercise also referred as Dustlik 2019. So this Dustlik 2019 again becomes important from your prelims 2020 perspective. So this bilateral exercise that is Dustlik 2019 will be conducted in November at Churchill training area near Tashkent. And this will be focused on the issue of counter-terrorism as both countries share a common concern with respect to the issue of counter-terrorism. So Dustlik 2019 or a joint exercise between India and Uzbekistan will enable sharing of best practices and experience between the armed forces of both countries and this will also lead to greater operational effectiveness between the two nations specifically with respect to enhanced defense engagement. So all these can be said to be the takeaways with respect to India-Uzbekistan defense meet. And as already highlighted both the sides have concluded an MOU on the cooperation in the field of military medicine as well as education between armed forces of India and Uzbekistan. And this MOU is a byproduct of interactions emanating from MOU on military education signed between India and Uzbekistan earlier in October 2018. Further, both the defense ministers also witnessed the first ever exchange of a video link between the defense colleges of both countries that is the college of defense management which is in Sikandrabad and also the armed forces academy which is in Tashkent in Uzbekistan. So this again shows increasing level of cooperation between India and Uzbekistan especially in the defense sector. Now this topic becomes important as similar questions have been asked by UPSC with respect to signing of deal between India and other countries. Now as you can see this particular question was asked by UPSC in 2019. The question was recently India signed a deal known as action plan for prioritization and implementation of cooperation areas in the nuclear field with which of the following countries. So the options were Japan, Russia, UK and USA. In this the correct answer is Russia. As you can see, it highlights about the India-Russia joint statement during visit of President of Russia Vladimir Putin to India in October 2018. It says that civil nuclear cooperation between India and Russia is an important component of strategic partnership which contributes to India's energy security and its commitment under the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. Here it says that the sites highlighted the progress achieved in fulfillment of agreements envisaged in the Memorandum of Understanding on Trilateral Cooperation in Implementation of Rupur Nuclear Power Project in Bangladesh. The sites also express satisfaction over action plan for prioritization and implementation of cooperation areas in the 
nuclear field identified jointly so it was this point which was asked in this particular question of 2019 so here the correct answer is russia the next news appears on page number 19 it says it's all in the genes a1 a2 are entirely avoidable why consuming milk is getting complicated now in this news you must know about a1 and a2 form of proteins which are found in milk a1 and a2 are two forms of beta casein now casein are high quality proteins and contains all the essential amino acids further caseins are the chief proteins in milk and also an essential ingredient of cheese so in this news analysis let us understand about both a1 and a2 forms of beta casein now this topic from your prelims perspective forms a part of general science now originally cow's milk had a2 protein however over a period of years through genetic mutation cow's milk started containing both protein a1 as well as a2 however it was considered that protein a1 had certain disadvantages and was considered bad for health a new zealand based scientist claimed that prominence of a1 beta casein over a2 in cow's milk could be a public health issue and containing a1 in cow's milk could lead to type 1 diabetes autism increased risk of heart diseases as well as various digestive issues now it was also considered that while digesting a1 in any milk it released bcm7 in the body which was an opium peptide and this affected immune as well as gastrointestinal system however this assumption was not agreed by european food safety authority as they agreed that there was no cause and effect relationship between consuming a1 protein and the illness which were alleged that is having illness with respect to immune system and gastrointestinal system even india's desi cow breeds like thar parker gheer and sahiwal also have a genetic makeup that yields milk high in a2 protein even the food safety and standards authority of india have found it not relevant enough to differentiate between protein a1 and a2 found in milks so we can say that whatever has been alleged with respect to effects of having or consuming a1 or cannot be substantiated with proper evidence however there are certain adulterants in milk which has serious adverse health effects such as urea formalin detergents ammonium sulfate boric acid caustic soda benzoic acid salicylic acid hydrogen peroxide sugar as well as melamine so these can be said to be some of the major adulterants used in milks which are very harmful to the human body now milk also contains calcium but this calcium from milk is not easily absorbed in humans and mostly in children so in this aspect you must also know the non dairy sources of calcium these includes ragi sesam lotus stem drumstick and water chestnuts so these are some of the important information which you must know with respect to this particular news here you must know about a1 and a2 protein and also the discussions going on with respect to a1 and a2 protein in milk now the editorial appearing on page number 10 highlights about the pegasus misadventure now this malware supposed to bug whatsapp has been dealt in detail in the dns news dated 31st october 2019 by mangal sir where he discussed about the pegasus method and how it affects mobile phones having whatsapp so you can refer to the dns video of 31st october 2019 to know more about the pegasus method as it has been already discussed in detail now the lead article appears with respect to the nscn im including the naga peace accord the news highlights intransigence as villain of the peace in nagaland aspirations of a new era can seldom be seen from an aging fixed vision and nscn im must recognize this now this topic in detail has been covered by nagendra sir on dns dated 13th october 2019 
here he has covered also the historical aspect of the naga deen as you can see he has discussed the issue of naga nationalism especially after independence armed insurrection demand for statehood naga society about naga peace accord and also about naga factions and insurgency so to have a comprehensive view and understanding of the naga society and naga peace accord kindly go through the dns dated 13th october 2019 now after our discussion these forms your practice question for the day what you can do is to take a pause of 5 seconds question number 1 it says consider the following statements about real time train information system first it has been developed by center for railway information system in collaboration with defense research development organization no the statement is incorrect as it has been developed in collaboration with isro second the application software in loco device shall determine train movement events at stations based on pre defined logic applied on spatial coordinates and speed received continuously from gagan receiver yes this statement is correct so the question was which of the statements given above is are correct so the correct answer here is a that is one only now question number 2 it says consider the following statements about dhanush guns first it is a short range artillery gun having a range of 200 kilometers only no the statement is incorrect as it is a long range artillery gun having a range of 36 kilometer second it is an upgraded version of bofors gun of russia no this statement is incorrect because bofors gun is not from russia but from sweden third it has an inertial navigational system having gps technology yes this is correct fourth it has automated gun sighting system equipped with camera thermal imaging and laser range finder so the question is which of the statements given above are correct so the here the correct answer is 3 and 4 so c becomes a correct answer now these are your practice question number 3 and practice question number 4 what you can do is to take a pause of another 5 seconds question number 3 it says consider the following statements first irnss 1a has been launched in the geosynchronous orbit as you can see in this list irnss 1a was launched in the gso orbit that is geosynchronous orbit hence the first statement is correct second terrestrial marine and aerial navigation is not possible through irnss satellites no this is incorrect as they are very much possible third irnss satellites provides standard positioning services and restricted services yes this is also correct so the question is which of the statements given above is are correct so the correct options are 1 and 3 so here the correct answer is d moving on to question number 4 it says india and uzbekistan has signed memorandum of understanding in which of the following areas options are military medicine military education and military training all these three options are correct so the correct answer here is d that is 1 2 and 3 with this we come to an end to discussion of today's newspaper let's move on to the question for the day 